Hi, this is Todd Crenshaw. Thanks for taking a look at my FEMA trailer rebuild. I've done some things here that I hope uh, interest you and inspire you to do something similar with your RV. If you've got any questions, please feel free to comment and let me know. I'll be happy to answer anything I can. This is the original trailer as it was uh, towed at home. Uh, I had a cement slab poured for it. And uh, it's pretty ugly on the inside, so let me go show you what, uh, what I got for my money. From doing comparisons as best I could, I believe this is called a bunkhouse model, and it's kind of obvious why. But can you imagine anybody other than children fitting in here? And it doesn't look real comfortable. The design was a little weird with the bathroom. It was the smallest thing I've ever seen. And the toilet is put directly in front of the sink, which was really awkward. Uh, for whoever used this trailer. This trailer is a little weird in design. Uh, even though it doesn't have a pop-out, the bunk that is uh, the couch on the right, when folded out, makes it nearly impossible to get to the bathroom. So <laughs> I hope you're sleeping in the back. Uh, that had to come out, of course, and be changed. Another look at the layout from the other end, down by the bathroom, uh, it seemed like things were not where they needed to be. The TV stand was over there on the right behind the uh, kitchen dining area, which is kind of weird. Uh, it seems like there was more room here that could be uh, better utilized. Clear up front, that's where the master bedroom was. The master bedroom was kind of awkward, too. It was very difficult to get around the end of the bed. It was right against the wall at the foot. And you can see here, it's suffered some water damage, so I had to take care of that. Um, this all came out, and you'll see that in a minute. So the first place I started was the bathroom, ripping everything out of it. Um, I was impressed that at least they did use PEX tubing uh, for all the water lines. PEX uh, is great, very flexible, doesn't uh, crack when frozen, works really well. So I did the same thing. When I rebuilt it, I put PEX all back in. Basically, on a rebuild like this, it's very much like those TV shows where they just start ripping everything out. Well, that's what I did. I ripped everything out right down to the outer skin of the uh, trailer. I'm pretty glad that I did rip everything out to the uh, outer skin because the insulation in this trailer was nothing more than a joke. Um, I couldn't believe how shoddy the workmanship was. There is no way this insulation was doing anything uh, other than just maybe causing the cold air or hot air from the outside to reroute slightly. But it was really, really poorly done. Um, I understand this was done quickly for the people, but it needed to be done much better. This is really shoddy work. And the picture here of the insulation, that is actually how it was put in here. And the one that was two back uh, of the front where it had the panel open, that's exactly how I found it. The insulation was, like I said, a joke. So everything, everything came out of the trailer. There's no linoleum on the floor anymore. Uh, all the walls are out to the outer sheet metal. Uh, ceiling, same thing. And I kept the fiberglass insulation. That came in handy later, and I'm glad I did keep it. And if you do a rebuild, I'd suggest you keep it too. And I'll, I'll show you why here in a minute. Another reason I'm glad that I pulled all this stuff out is I, I knew the trailer had some water damage. I just didn't know the extent. Well, all four corners were leaking. So I had to pull out the rotted wood, replace it with good wood, um, make sure that everything was uh, good and uh, secure again. I mean, some of the two-by-twos were actually uh, crumbling in my hand, so those were replaced. Once I fixed the dry rot, of course, I had to still make sure that no more water was going to get in. So I used this uh, stuff called EPDM liquid rubber. I could have bought the sheets of EPDM and put it back on the roof. But the liquid rubber sounded like a way to go. And it worked beautifully, uh, resurfacing the entire roof and sealing everything very well. You can check out my video on applying the EPDM uh, liquid rubber. I've got a uh, special segment of just it, so go check that out if you're interested in it. Now with everything out of the way, I decided to go with a foam insulation. Uh, there are sheets you can buy at Home Depot and Lowe's. They have an R7 uh, insulation value, so I figured that would probably work pretty good. And it actually did turn out really nice. The foam was really easy to work with and fit into the walls really well. 
I found a lumber yard that supplied one eighth inch plywood, which is great for the wall. So I started putting that in along with the ceiling. And you'll notice I also started putting in items like the refrigerator and all that to get an idea where this is all going to go. The extra insulation, that is above the foam in the ceiling, so the, the ceiling is very well insulated. Once I had the carpet in, I started framing everything else in, uh, where the shower was going to go, the sink, and the headboard for the bed. I continued the framing, and these are just two by twos, and I used the same exact screws that uh, came out of the trailer, uh, tearing it all apart. Yeah, I kept all those. Why repay for that? Worked like a champ. You can also see I've already painted. Uh, the walls are called Indian Sand. It's kind of a tannish uh, color. And I did go with a split color of a dark green and the, the Indian uh, Sand. Didn't work out so well, so I went purely with the Indian Sand. And I continued with the upper cabinets. All the uh, framing there is into studs. I had marked on the walls there where the studs were. So to make sure that everything was going to be secure and I didn't have things falling down uh, as I was traveling. You can see where the original toilet went. So the uh, new toilet, uh, not far from where that was. Uh, we plugged that and uh, went ahead and installed the new toilet. Now remember, the FEMA trailers didn't come with black and gray water tanks. So I ordered them off of eBay and installed them myself underneath. Um, and they work fantastically. And if you do this yourself, remember, uh, these tanks require a vent. And that goes up to the roof of the uh, trailer. So don't, don't forget the vent. Carpeting typically doesn't work well in a bathroom area, so I went with wood laminate, and it's working out great. Most trailers are difficult to tear apart. When I built this, I made it so I can pull a few screws and disassemble anything and get to what I need to get uh, repairs done if necessary. And I suggest you go the same route. For all the windows, I just built boxes and then stuck a dowel rod through to be the curtain rod. Now for the counter, you kind of think, well, what are you going to do? Well, inside my house, I used this painted counter material uh, to do a black marble look, and it looks fantastic. So I decided to do the same thing in the trailer, but instead using an emerald green. And the look's okay. Um, it's not the greatest. It's not as good as what I did in my house with the black, but it does cover uh, dirt or hide dirt, I should say, very well. And it's easy to clean. It's very smooth uh, and, and works quite well for, you know, a cheap counter. It does the trick. Now, here's a trick that uh, you can have done, but typically it's done by professionals, and that's what I had done. Uh, I reversed the axles and put them on the bottom of the leaf springs. This gave about six to seven inches of additional height to the trailer. And why would you do this? Well, when you're out boondocking or going down some pretty rough roads, it's nice to have the trailer much higher off the ground than it normally would be. It allows that clearance so you don't have rocks puncturing your uh, black water tank <laughs> and things like that. So just a, a good suggestion. Uh, the stability is still just as good, and uh, it lets me get in places that other people can't. So here's like a 15-minute walkthrough of the trailer as it is today. A uh, few minor changes, but that's always happening, so it's just the way it is. So this is the tour of my semi-completed FEMA travel trailer uh, rebuild project that I started many years ago, uh, probably four or five. Um, all the cabinets uh, are built out of uh, just uh, unfinished wood. If they break, very easy to replace. Uh, they are designed or, or built with uh, two by, oops, that's a two by four there, um, two by twos, and just mounted in, and then I put a face plate of pine on them. The doors use a, um, I think it's called um, Craig system, to put all the screws in them so they're hidden. And all I did was slot the wood here on down the center and then slid a, a 1 8 inch panel in. So lots of storage, I'll tell you that. There's just a ton of it. Um, less heater in there. Some wiring still exposed. I've got to get that hidden. Uh, most likely all that will eventually get painted in there, the 2x2s. Two um, but just haven't got around to it and haven't seen the need for it. Lots of storage. Um, did keep the old couch from the original FEMA trailer 
and built storage underneath it. Those are outside chairs. Um, no door on that, no needed, nobody sees it, and it just makes it easier to get stuff out. Um, cabinets underneath. There's a blanket in there, DVDs, lots and lots of room. Uh, used magnetic clasps, um, as well as uh, the, uh, what are those, those button type that clip, clip on, on the doors. Um, ran the wood or molding, it's not really molding, just strips of wood across. Uh, the trailer, as you saw in the pictures, was completely gutted, uh, totally gutted. So, new ceiling, and the ceiling is done with a, uh, you put a coat of paint on it, and then you have crumpled up paper tissue, and you fold it out on it, and then you run the paint over it again, so you get a nice texture. Uh, the walls have the same thing, real nice texture. So it works out real well. Uh, my uncle came up with this idea. These are just boxes basically and in the end there's a hole and there's the dowel that holds the the curtain in place. There we go. So worked really really well. Um, the ceiling was interesting putting that up. I had to use a drywall lift um, to put uh, that up just like you would sheetrock and it just lifted the whole 4x8 piece up and then locked it in place and then I ran these across each one of the seams to make sure that everything stayed together you know, real nicely. Um, since this couch folds out into a bed, I also added, move the dish rack out of the way, added uh, a sliding rail here for curtains. And the curtain comes all the way across. And so if I've got guests, they, they have some privacy up here uh, from the rest of the trailer. So it works out real well. And it slides really good. These are usually what hospitals use. So it works really well. Let me slide that back out of the way. Of course, got to have all your safety devices. Smoke and uh, carbon dioxide detectors. And... You get to have, uh, of course, your temperature gauges inside out, thermostat for the um, <laughs> for the heater. There we go, the furnace. The fridges that I've used in the freezer are standard fridge and freezers for uh, an office. They really aren't designed for a travel trailer, but they work quite well because I run off solar power when I'm up at my ranch property, um, and they both take very little power actually to run. I'm really surprised. You have a vent fan above them that keeps air circulating around them uh, to pull the heat out. Uh, because as you know, refrigerators and freezers do dump heat. Uh, the counter. The counter was interesting. I was trying to figure out what I wanted to go with. And I came up with uh, using a painted counter. You can get this stuff at Home Depot and Lowe's, sometimes at Wall, uh, Wally World, Walmart. <laughs> And uh, I did it in my kitchen in my house in black marble, so I decided to use the emerald marble, and it turned out pretty good. Works really well. How do I keep the microwave up there, or on the counter? There's a board underneath that it's bolted to, so, so it doesn't move. Um, all of this was in totally different locations, of course. Uh, put in the hood, uh, cut the hole in the wall for that. Um, all my cupboards here, same thing as the front cupboard. You can see the 2x2 two two up there that shapes it. And in some of these I do have uh, ends on them. So like there, there's an end but it needs to be painted. Uh, some of them just go straight through so you can reach through one and out the other door. <laughs> so works really well. Like I said, lots of storage. Lots and lots of storage. Now you don't see any drawers here. And that's by intent. Um, drawers actually take up more space and have a tendency on occasion when hitting the appropriate bumps <laughs> to open up and fling stuff all over. So what I went for instead was just getting some Wally World plastic ones and sliding them in there and they hold uh, everything I want without any problem. So it works real well. Okay. Now you see this doesn't have, let me back up a little bit. 
that unit doesn't have any drawers. And it's kind of like, well, why? Well, I like to be able to do laundry. <laughs> so I've got a little Harrier washing machine. Does a fine job. Spins pretty well too. Um, but to really spin, I put it in this, and this spins at like 3,000 RPM, and everything comes out almost dry. It's amazing. And that dumps right into the sewer line, uh, the gray water line. So all the water that comes out of these ends up going down into the, the gray water tank. So works out real well. Okay, I'll close it up. Pretty good. Hot water heater switches there. That was the original location, so I didn't move it. All the lights in the trailer are LED. Switched over to those, and wow, that really makes a difference on power use. Um, <laughs> I can go, I could probably leave them on for months. <laughs> They'd still be burning. Um, amazing little lights, worked out really well. Underneath the, the bed, let's get down here. Throw the, that out that way. Back under there. And can't really see it, unfortunately. Uh, behind all that stuff is a water tank. Yeah, you can't see it. That's no good. Um, but lots and lots of storage into there. Full length of the bed, almost the full width of the bed. And also have three doors down the side. So I can get into this stuff any which way without a problem. Originally went with a air mattress. Decided to get rid of that because it uh, just wasn't comfortable. Granted, I, you know, I was going for lightweight. Um, just didn't work out. Uh, not quite as comfortable as a regular bed. So now I've got like a uh, Tempur-Pedic bed in there. It works much better. I sleep a whole lot better. Again, above the bed, plenty of storage. There's a uh, two uh, hooks there that's... Well, we'll just say if somebody comes in at night, they would be unhappy to meet me with what that holds. So, <laughs> um, plates, all that stuff goes above. And down towards the end, I usually end up putting uh, uh, information about the, the trailer itself and paperwork and all that good stuff. Uh, down in the front, if we go down here, all sorts of storage. Not deep, but plenty of it. Uh, there's my water. Typically, I'll, I'll have uh, get the Wally World water jugs. What are those? Three and a half gallons or so, and that'll come out and set up on the on the counter up here. So it just makes it nice and easy. You don't have to run any electricity. You don't have to worry about uh, your fresh water tank, except for for showers and stuff. Again, more storage. You head towards the back. I've got another. Wonderful curtain, and that'll come out. And so, if you're back there doing your thing or taking a shower, again, privacy is there, it's no big deal, works out really well. And uh, again, this is just the kind of sliders that you find on uh, in a hospital, you can get them online, works really well. Back window, back window, uh, originally, this was a bunk bed area. And the back window was uh, viewable. You could see out of it. Didn't want anybody to be able to see in, though, while I was taking a shower, because that might be ugly. <laughs> or doing other things, let's say that, uh, with the toilet back here. So, frosted the window. You can also pick that up at Home Depot or Lowe's. It's easy to put on. It's just a plastic film. Uh, Full-size sink. And you might want to, or you might ask why I went with the um, curved faucet. Um, I like the ability to get it out of the way and work in here. Uh, if you're just wetting down your hair or something, it makes it a lot easier. Just like this type of, of faucet, so we're with it. Um, there's, of course, the medicine cabinet, empty. <laughs> uh, I could have put it in the wall. Instead, I didn't. I just mounted it on it. Works just as well. Just as happy with it. Um, the FEMA trailers don't come with gray and black water tanks, so I put those in, and that goes straight down into the black water tank. It was fairly easy to put in. Um, as you can see, I got the wood flooring, or laminate flooring, I should say. It's, it's not real wood. Uh, went in real nice. Looks good. Full-size shower. 
not uh, not one of the little ones that you have to squeeze into and that's the same thing as you'll notice why there's no walls around the toilet <laughs> uh, when I was looking for an RV and I went out and I stepped into one of those little rooms that has the toilet in, I thought I'd barely fit this is not gonna work so uh, I decided to just not do those and same thing with the shower the showers are usually too small so just put in a full-size shower works real well shower curtain just is on a rod behind the, the wood there so it works real well that way too. Uh, power panel was easy to put in. Um, the box just kind of remounted, uh, the breaker box there and the electronics for it just mounted uh, right into uh, a hole that I had in there. And I really love my little sea level two uh, tank monitors. They're, they're really, really great. They use a solar, or solar, a sonar, there we go. Um, sending unit that is on the outside of the tank so you never ever have to worry about garbage getting into the sensor and causing a, an incorrect reading um, they're not super accurate but they tell you when it's full and that's really all I need um, works great and I've had no problems with it at all and looking back towards the front um, you can see the TV is nice and clear easy to see from the bed uh, unless I have guests up there, of course. <laughs> but uh, overall works real well. I was originally going to uh, build the cabinets for the entire trailer and then re you know, pull them out and finish them. And then uh, after I was looking at it for a while, I thought, well, you know, that's going to be a lot of work. I'll just paint them white. Well, that turned out to be like, you know, I have dogs. You're in a trailer. You're gonna get dirty things are gonna get dirty white's just not the color so I just left it unfinished and it actually has worked out really really well if I happen to bump something and break it kick a corner off a cupboard uh, along those lines it's a matter of just running over to Home Depot and building a, a quick replacement and bolting it in nothing needs to be done so why the heck not and it goes with the cutting board, so <laughs> just leave it the way it is. It works. It works quite well. Very pleased overall with how the uh, whole project came out. Um, not that hard. Uh, total, I've probably got anywhere from five to six thousand dollars worth of material that I had to put back in from the complete teardown. Uh, the trailer itself was uh, just under six thousand, so. 12,000. Yes, I could have bought a trailer, um, complete trailer for $12,000, even a good used one for $12,000. But this is custom. This is the way I wanted it. It's wide open, lots of room. I don't feel claustrophobic. And what I mean by that is go to the front of a trailer and I can see clear to the back without a problem. It just, it's very open living space. The original FEMA trailer had the uh, master bedroom wall was right about here, just short of the door. And so go back, if you were to go back to about where this board is, on the, the uh, headboard on the bed, that was another wall. And so when you stepped in it, you felt like you were in a 10 by 10 box. It was terrible. So uh, it was good to, good to rip it all out and, and redo it. Anyway, hope you uh, enjoyed the look at the FEMA trailer and the rebuild on it and what I did. Uh, if you have questions, feel free to, free to ask. I'm uh, happy to tell you it was uh, an interesting adventure. Learned a lot about trailers and how they work. Um, just a lot of fun and, and a lot of pride in it that it came out as well as it did and it's working as well as it has. Thank you for watching. So do you make mistakes doing this stuff? Definitely. This is but ugly. But when done, you get to take your trailer to places like this. That is the bluest sky. I had mentioned that I run my refrigerators off solar power, and I do. These four panels provide enough power for my uncle and my trailer uh, up there for about 48 hours. And we run uh, eight batteries. Um, the only thing we can't run is things like the microwave. That does require the generator, but power is available, so it's kind of nice. This is about 7,000 feet up, so it's up there a ways. Um, some days are nice and warm. You can leave the door open. 
Some days are a little cold, and uh, that is May. That is in May that uh, that snow's laying on the ground. We we'll also have quite a few uh, little flying friends and quite a few uh, walking friends that come visiting. Uh, even a cougar at one time decided to come through at night. So uh, a lot of wildlife out there and a lot of fun to see it, uh, you know, in its natural habitat. And then I get to wake up to this uh, beautiful mountains in the south. Uh, just what more can you ask for? Uh, so build your own RV and, and go enjoy the outdoors. It's fantastic.